Okay, so we'll go back to another video. Here's a little nice, short, easy integral puzzle. And I think this is worth showing that for any x in the reals and a continuous function f, suppose that we're given two different types of integrals. So we have i sub 1 is equal to the bounds from sine squared t to 1 plus cosine squared t of x times f of x times 2 minus x dx. And then the second one is the exact same thing, just excluding the x from this side. So what we want to know is what is the value of i sub 1 divided by i sub 2? So you just have to think outside the box a little bit. It's actually, we only need rather one property dealing with intervals and to give that away, this is actually going to be using King's property, which is acts as a reflection property. And of course, like you can see with that formula incorporated with that, that because we have sine squared t and one plus cosine squared t, we can already see that we also need another identity with the fundamental trig trig we're also going to need the fundamental theorem of trigonometry to help utilize this whole evaluation, which the answer actually just comes down to very simple. Again, this is a very short um, integral puzzle that I think it's worth testing your mind outside the boundaries. So let's actually just get started. So as King's property states as the following, so let me write this in short. This says that we have the integral from a to b of some function g of x, for example, dx, is equal to the integral from a to b of g of a plus b, and then subtract x. So again, a plus b is from our bounds, and you can see why I mentioned that we'll be using the fundamental theorem of trigonometry, as you see that we're going to add those bounds, and you can see that where we're coming from, what the value is that going to be. So within that situation, we already know that obviously that sine squared t plus cosine squared t is indeed just equal to 1, access the unit circle when you think of that perspective. So we're actually do, going to do a little bit of a substitution change of variables. Well, not really change of variables, but again, it's using King's property with a different substitution. So rewriting our i sub 1 integral. So let me start off with the given that this is sine square of t and then 1 plus cosine square of t. So if we do the substitution again, so if I add our bound sine square t plus cosine square t is 1, add a 1 again, so it's 2 and then subtract x with the substitution over here and putting this back in for our new i sub 1 um, con conversion, then this will yield us 2 minus x and then multiply with f then times, well, f of, then the input would be 2 minus x, that's just the quantity itself. And then we have 2 subtract with the quantity 2 minus x, then dx. As you see, I did the substitution 2 minus x and then plugged that in for the new input of x. So now we can actually do a little bit of substitution over here. So now we have 1 plus cosine square t on the top, then still sine square t on the bottom. So um, cleaning up everything, of course, it's going to be 2 minus x and then multiply with f, f of x times 2 minus x and then dx. Okay. So now as you can see, we have a quantity here multiplied with here. So as you, so with that, we can actually apply a little bit of some linearity. So keep going forward over here. So now applying this. So now I'm going to have again, same bounds yet again. So this time I'll have two times this, and then we'll subtract with minus X times this for the integral. So two times F of X times two minus X, then DX. Okay. And then now then subtract with the same bounds yet again, of x times f of x times two minus x, then finish it off with dx. And as you can see that so far, that's our i of one set on this left side, and this is equal to the right side. And what's cool is that what's given over here, we have i sub one and i sub two, what actually matches that we can actually put in that substitution. So therefore, this is equal to the same thing as two times, as you notice, this is twice i sub two, and then subtract i sub one. Okay. So again, this is very short and you can see how I can finish this problem up to solve what our given is just like that. So to reiterate, i sub one is equal to two times i sub two minus i sub one. And then if I just divide the i sub two to both sides yet again, just to give what we have. So just like this, then just cut down some of the terms here. So this will yield us just two, then minus i sub one divided by i sub two. I'll add the i sub one to i sub two to both sides. So that means this is gonna be, let me move this over here, two times i sub one divided by i sub two equals two. And so therefore this just completes our fun little puzzle. i sub one, i sub two is indeed just equal to just one, which completes this little nice, um, and I wouldn't really call it a brain teaser, but again, it's a nice puzzle that I think it's actually worth 
testing out your knowledge from that. So there you have it. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.